suggestion is you should determine what are the relevant financial performance measures or metrics required by the business. Ensure delivery of consistent, accurate, timely, and relevant management information to support decision making and risk management across the business. An efficient finance function will provide performance metrics measures which are relevant and appropriate to their, to their organization for decision making. It's not just about providing information, it has to be relevant. So one has to identify the true business drivers there towards strategic decision making and, and value creation. They need to identify um, these drivers, which of course you're gonna need some deep analysis and understanding of the business. It's important that the financial persons don't just sit in their offices and get, uh, they need to get out and understand the business that they're in. And they need to understand its processes, its operations. Um, simply stated, effective performance reporting should help management understand and improve the organization's performance. An effective, efficient finance function must identify and closely monitor the right set of performance indicators to move the organization forward. And you know, you use these tools such as ratio analysis. Uh, ratio analysis is a very powerful tool actually, and it is fundamental for management to evaluate the health of the firm's operations. Now there are different types of ratios that can be used. Finding out where a ca the firm's cash is tied up in inventories and receivables can help to shed some light on how efficiently it is being managed. So you would use efficiency ratios, such as inventory turnover, total asset turnover, and accounts receivable turnover. And they offer different me measures of the firm's ef uh, effectiveness. They allow you to judge how well your business is using its assets and to determine if changes can be made. These ratios are really very helpful in determining how efficiently your business are operating, your business is, is operating. So it's important to explore these different ratios. Another area for efficiency in terms of providing information to management is the timely and relevant reports. There's so much inefficiency in this because there are always a number of reports being provided with questionable value. And the delay in providing this information is really sometimes quite inefficient. The average management report is not only too long usually, but it's also complex. And managers typically only use a fraction of the information as it is not useful in helping them to make decisions. So, you know, um, finance persons, we believe that we you know, have the answers and we will provide what we think we want to provide, but it has to be relevant and timely. I will tell you a story, um, it was certainly with my organization many years ago, many, many years ago, our monthly financials used to be provided, it used to be produced in the, uh, I think it was the 15th working day, and we thought we were doing pretty well. And then one day we realized, if you wait until the 15th working day after the end of the month to provide your financials, you're not gonna be able to correct anything that has gone wrong in the, in the previous month. So we just made an edict, fourth working day, cut off, and it's amazing what that did. It meant that we would have had it out by maybe by the third working day, so things that had gone wrong, you'd get to it early, and you'd know exactly what could be done for corrective action. So timely uh, reports, very important. Information measures sometimes are not clear. When, when the information comes out, it's not clear what, where the company is and where it is heading. The there's no recommendation for action and change of behavior that's not provided in these reports. We have to give recommendations. We need to give some sort of idea of what can be done. That has to be part of the finance function. Financial officers and accountants must strive to transform the finance function from an inward looking organization for, uh, focused primarily on historical financial reporting to one that spends more time focused on forward looking strategic decision making and value creation. To do this, information must be relevant to needs and useful in making decisions, fast in delivery with more in-depth analysis. Cost control, well, 
that's a continuous process. Um, <laughs> at Grace Kennedy, we have projects continuing throughout the year, every year, always looking at different elements of cost, utilities, everything. It's a must for all businesses in the environment that we're in, in rising costs. You must continuously look at your costs. The next one that we're going to look as, at is documenting policies and procedures. Now, this is something that is not really normally done at times because who has time to really document you, what you're doing? It is so important. It is important that you know all processes are documented, and uh, it helps. It well, cer for it certainly helps the employees to know exactly what is required of them. So there's a standard way of doing things, regardless of who is carrying out the task, and it is also a risk mitigating strategy, as employees will become fully aware of what is expected, and they will. It will. Eliminate ambiguities in their work. Identifying and managing risks inherent to various processes. No risk management has really come into play in the last few years, I'd say, you know, really to the fore. And it is really very important now. And at Grace, each company in the group is required to identify their top 10 risks along with mitigating strategies every year. So you go through your business with each of the companies, there are a lot of companies, but each company has to identify in my business what do I consider to be my top 10 risks. And within each of these companies, they know each department has also to do the same thing. So within a department, so the finance function, the finance department has to say, what are my top 10 risks? Is it the risk of fraud? Is it the risk of not having my financials out on time? Do I identify it? And having identified it, you also determine what are the mitigating strategies. What am I going to do to ensure that this doesn't happen? This allows you to anticipate and to take steps towards avoiding problems before they become a reality. 